Well, South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford is offering more apologies because earlier this week he admitted to an affair with a woman who lives in Argentina. Yeah, and now he's facing not only calls to resign, but possible criminal investigations. A lot of people want to know how he paid for trips to see his mistress. Sanford has already agreed to pay back about $8,000. That was for a trip, a state trip he took, but he did see his mistress on that trip. He's apologizing again. This time he apologized to the state legislature. I wanted generally to, to apologize to every one of you all for letting you down. I've been making legislative calls throughout the morning and yesterday afternoon on my way back up from Sullivan's, apologizing to them, uh, to, saying I'm sorry, but I owe that to you all. Well, uh, Jenny Sanford, that's his wife's name, she's openly talking about her husband's infidelity. In an interview with the Associated Press, she says she was devastated to find out her husband had gone to Argentina. She says she had told him in no uncertain terms not to see that woman again and saying, like most women I imagine would say, there is no room for three people in a marriage. Yep. So joining us now from Boston is an expert of troubled relationships, psychotherapist Lauren Mackler. And, and Lauren, I got to be quite honest with you. When, when we saw the response uh, from Sanford's wife, a, a lot of people said, wow, she did not stand there while he made the apology like we've seen so many other wives do. And she also made this statement that I want you to take a listen to. His career is not a concern of mine. He's going to have to worry about that. I'm worried about my family and the character of my children. Now, this is a woman who obviously mm. is very fired up about it. She says his career is not a concern of mine. She is worried about her family. But can her marriage survive something like this? Well, I think the way that she's handling it is actually uh, probably a pretty good way to do it. I think she's, it's very humiliating to go through this experience. And when you're standing by your partner in public, it, it's a tough thing to do. I think it's really, that part is a private matter. The infidelity is between the two of them, and that's a very separate issue than his career issues. Well, why is it then we don't see more women come out uh, who are in, put in her position to have a very public affair, if you will, or a, a philandering husband very publicly? Why don't most come out? Why would a woman want to stand there by her husband during that press conference as he apologizes? Why don't more women do exactly what she did? Well, I think there's a lot of different motivations for, for appearing in public and, and standing by your partner in that kind of situation. Um, first of all, you have to see, is the person still interested in staying in the marriage? You know, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. But certainly, it, it, if they're interested in repairing the marriage, it's an effort and a gesture on their part to join their partner and stand by them. But it's not something that everybody can do. And I think people have to just honor what they can do and what they can't do. And she's obviously processing through a lot of feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's a normal thing, you know, in this kind of situation. And I think she just needs to do it in the way that she needs to do it. So you are a relationship expert. Give us some of your expertise on how not only this couple, but others out there who, who face affairs deal with it and how they come out of it. Well, first of all, there's a real erosion of trust in situations of infidelity. And that's a real hard thing to rebuild. It's not something that can't be rebuilt, but there's some things, some, some sort of ingredients that have to be present for okay, that to happen. Okay, what are they? First, well, first, both people have to be equally committed, or at least nearly equally committed, to renewing the, the relationship. And I say renew instead of repairing, because if you repair and go back to the norm of what it was, then you're setting yourself up for potentially that to happen again. The other thing is it takes a lot of uh, communication, conflict resolution skills, which many of us never learned, and we don't know how to communicate effectively. And they have to get the right resources to be able to address the roots of the issues that led to the demise of the relationship and for the factors you know to come come together so an infidelity then happened okay. you know it, it's it's not an easy thing to do but it can be done but unfortunately the truth is the mi minority of couples that go through this really come out of it stronger than they were before okay a lot of women and we're just talking about women here it's not all just the men who cheat in relationships sometimes women do but yeah. and for the sake of the sure. story and this situation we're talking about the men who cheat a lot of women would listen to what you just said and like come on <laughs> how in the world can you ever get that trust back, back in a relationship <laughs> is that even possible I, I hear people talk about it but people we all know and are I mean just around us to try to get that back it's really sounds like an impossibility 
Well, there's more at play here than just the infidelity. I mean, that's the, that's the symptom. That's not really the root problem. And the other thing that people forget is that it takes two people to make a good relationship, and it also takes two people to make a bad relationship. So you have to look at, even though one is the villain and one looks like the victim, there's more at play there. You know, they both had a part in the deterioration of their marriage, and they both have to come together, take their, be accountable to what their part was. But even though, you know, we, we blame the villain and we judge the villain, both people have a part in the relationship, and, and a relationship is a culmination right. of the dynamics between the two of them. And very quickly, uh -huh. what about the people of his state? How do they get the trust back from mm. him? Well, I think that, you know, we're human beings. We make errors and we make bad choices. I'm not condoning the choices, but I think that we have to understand that we are human beings and sometimes we learn by trial and error. Now, we also have to be accountable to our actions and he's got to be accountable. And I hope that he's, you know, he's going to be and I hope he's genuine in his regret. But I think that also it's going to take time, and, and actions are stronger than words. Yes, they are. So I okay. think they'll be watchful, mm -hmm. and I think he has to be accountable, and whatever that looks like, you know, paying the money back and, uh, and, and staying on course for the rest of his tenure, wow. if, he, if he is going to stay in, in, uh, in office. Wow. Yeah, psychotherapist Lauren Mackler, thanks so much for your insight today. We do appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. You know, an expert in troubled relationship. That's got to be some tough work right, uh, right there. She's Imagine doing, the story she hears. Oh, you know, she heard some stuff. But uh, yeah, some interesting perspective yeah. there.